if our limit shop complication. If our limit shock complication is an emerging condition in which several blood and fluid, fluid make the heart unable to pump enough blood to the body. This type of shock can cause many organs to stop work. Welcome to this video on the subject of shock. Now when we use shock in the clinical context, we've got to be fairly precise about the definition. So we're using exactly the right term to describe exactly the right condition. And what shock doesn't mean in a medical context is that someone's had a fright or that they're suffering from some acute post-traumatic stress disorder. That's more a psychological phenomena. Now, I'm not saying that these psychological phenomena cannot be very serious, debilitating, even life-threatening. But they're not what we mean by the term shock. When we're talking about shock, we're talking about a state of reduced tissue perfusion. Shock is about circulatory failure. The circulatory system is no longer functioning as it should. So what we've got here is kind of definition of shock. So we're talking about a state, it's a clinical state, with reduction in systemic tissue perfusion. Systemic means the tissues of the body. So there is a reduced amount of blood going through all of the body tissues. There is a reduction in systemic tissue perfusion in shock. So what? Why, why does this matter? Well, it matters because perfusion is necessary to deliver oxygen to the tissues, to deliver nutrients to the tissues, and to remove the waste products of metabolic processes from the tissues. If there's not an adequate circulation, the tissues will become hypoxic, they will become malnourished, and they will start to be poisoned by, by the accumulation of their own toxins, which are not washed away in the blood. So this matters because it results in, resulting in decreased delivery of oxygen and the reduced removal of waste products. And eventually, this will damage the tissues. It will lead to tissue injury. Now, in other talks in this series, you've seen a diagram probably something like this. We have an arterial blood supply. Arter is divided into smaller arterial vessels. And these arterial vessels supply areas of tissue with blood. Because they supply them with blood, they're also supplying them with oxygen, of course. So the arterial blood will come along an arterial branch divide into smaller arterial branches, into progressively smaller arteries, then into arterioles, then the arterial... Complications in medicine. The situation in a problem shock occurs when the volume of the circulatory system is still developed to allow adequate circulation to the tissues of the body. The AM of the station is to cover the hypovolemia and hypoperfusion of vital organs such as the kidneys before irreversible demands occur. Which factors? A healthy adult can withstand the loss of the heart, a uh, later from a circulation from above 5 liters, without ill effect, however, late volumes and rapid loss case, so resilient related problems. Train materials available from Action Training Systems, please visit our website at www.action training.com or Training objectives included in this program are listed on the screen. The following video is a short sample from the program. A complete listing of our training products is available on our website. To manage a patient with anaphylactic shock, control any immediate life threats to the ABCs. Make sure that the allergen no longer poses a threat to the patient or the responders. Administer oxygen per protocols. Loosen or remove any constricting clothing or jewelry. Assess the patient's vital signs. If signs or symptoms of respiratory distress or shock are present, determine if the patient has a prescribed epinephrine auto-injector 
and if it is available. If your protocols permit you to carry and administer an auto-injector, contact medical direction for guidance. If allowed, you can assist the patient with her injector or administer the one you carry. Always follow your protocols regarding the use of auto-injectors. To administer an auto-injector, confirm that you have the correct drug on hand. Check the expiration date. Press the end of the injector firmly against the outer aspect of the patient's upper leg at a 90 degree angle. Pressure will trigger the release of the spring-loaded needle and inject the dose. Thank you for viewing this program excerpt. For more information about the full line of over... Investigations correlation screen the date of arterial events may show a metabolic academia from poor perfusion mistake, but is particularly plagued with perfusion. Monitoring the upper which may irritate the pros and cons. Comes no both vomiting blood, abdominal pain, chest pain, blood in the store, abdominal swelling, blood in the room. The individual may be so called inward, abscess, or in the short breath, or may be fit names on the same day, or even on similar with the postural extension. There may be symptoms related to the case of the tobolemia, which has pain from a bloody wound, infection, and the wound. Check for danger before approaching a casualty. Find out if they are conscious by gently shaking their shoulders and speaking to them. If they don't respond, Check whether they're breathing normally. Open their airway by putting one hand on their forehead and gently tilting their head back. Lift the chin by placing two fingers on the point, taking care not to put any pressure on their neck, which could block their airway. Look for movement of their chest. Feel for breath on your cheek and listen for sounds of breathing for 10 seconds. If they are breathing, put them in the recovery position. First, put the arm closest to you at a right angle. Take their other arm and place the back of their hand against their cheek. Grab their far leg and pull it towards you. The body will roll over easily. Tilt their head back and lift their chin to make sure their airway is open and check for normal breathing again. Finally, adjust their leg to ensure they are stable. The recovery position helps them to continue breathing as their airway remains open and they will be stable and won't roll onto their back. This is Hypovolemia is a state of decreased blood pressure, more specifically decreased in volume of blood plasma. It is the cardiovascular component of volume compression. But uh, it also is the most essential one. Hypovolemia and volume compression are sometimes used to some Yeah. In this condition, there is an absence of adequate fluids in the body. You get a whole different picture of the patient. The patient tends to be quite drawn, um, thin from their normal appearance. And their overall cognitive perceptual state is a lot of confusion. It's a bit disordered out of fluids. Uh, people become quite thirsty. And in terms of their heart assessment, there's a very rapid, thready pulse described as tachy for tachycardia. And the blood pressure 
is low. The patient's skin turgor and actual palpation of the skin reveals very warm, dry skin with decreased resilience. And their muscles show signs of weakness. And the patients often experience cramping. Frequent oral care because of the dry, irritated mucous membranes in the mouth, and attention to skin care to avoid any kind of breakdown are also important. I and O monitoring, vital sign assessment are also, as always, important to do. Hemorrhagic shock occurs when the body begins to shut down due to heavy blood blow. People suffering injury in the case heavy blending may go in the hemorrhagic shock in the bleeding is not stopped immediately. Shock is defined as a state in which tissue perfusion is inadequate to maintain normal aerobic cellular metabolism. Shock has been divided into four or five different types according to its etiology. Hypovolemic, cardiogenic, septic, neurogenic, and hypoadrenal. Hypovolemic shock. Hypovolemic shock is defined as tissue hypoperfusion resulting from inadequate intravascular volume. This is the most common type of shock that is encountered in surgical patients. The most common cause of hypovolemic shock is hemorrhage. Hemorrhage can occur post-operatively or after a trauma. Not uncommonly, patients with a GI bleed can present with significant blood loss as well. Surgical patients that are not hemorrhaging can develop hypovolemic shock. Hemorrhage has been further stratified into classes. Class 1 hemorrhage occurs when there is a loss of 10 to 15 percent of the circulating blood volume. In a 70 kilogram male, this would be between 500 and 700 milliliters. For perspective, when a person donates blood, typically 500 milliliters of blood is removed. This amount of blood loss is typically well tolerated and no change in blood pressure is usually seen. Class 2 hemorrhage is a loss of 20 to 30 percent of blood volume. 750 to 1500 milliliters in the 70 kilogram male. These patients will have mild tachycardia and narrow pulse pressure, delayed capillary refill, tachypnea, and at times mild to moderate anxiety. Class 3 hemorrhage is a loss of 30 to 40 percent of blood volume in the 70 kilogram man, 1500 to 2000 milliliters. These patients will have hypotension, marked tachycardia, confusion, pallor, and ulguria. Note that in order to have hypotension with hemorrhage, 30% of the circulating blood volume has been lost. Class 4 hemorrhage is a loss of more than 40% blood volume, greater than 2 liters in our 70 kilogram person. These patients will have hemodynamic instability, significant mental status changes. Class 4 hemorrhage will result in cardiovascular collapse if it is not properly treated.